All right, thanks for watching and happy Pyamatine's Day, the Pyam version of Valentine's Day. In order to celebrate the festivities, today we will find the area of the following mysterious region, which is written in polar coordinates. So r equals to 1 minus sine of theta. And in order to draw that region, let's be guided by the graph of 1 minus sine of x. So 1 minus sine of x, it starts at 1 and then goes down to 0 at uh, pi over 2. And then it goes up to 1 at pi and then up to um, 2 at 3 pi over 2 and then goes down to 1 at 2 pi. So that's all we need. <laughs> realize the concavity isn't quite right, so that is the correct graph. Okay, so again, it's uh, 0, pi over 2, pi, and then 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. And now let's see what happens to the uh, graph. And you'll see it's very pretty and You'll see why it has to do with Valentine's Day. So what happens here, at the angle of zero, it starts at one. And then as you increase the angle to go to pi over two, notice it just decreases. The radius decreases and we get closer and closer to zero. And then from pi over two to pi, the radius increases back to one. So we're back at 1 here. And then from pi to 3 pi over 2, the radius increases to 2. And then lastly, the radius decreases back to 1. And that's why from all the producers of Dr. Payam, Happy Valentine's Day! That's the toy model of a heart. And in math, it's called a cardioid. It's the only way we can get cardio is by drawing 1 minus sine of theta. And the goal for today is to figure out what the area inside that region is. And I will tell you the formula now, and if you're interested in the end, I can tell you how to get that formula. So again, we don't need that picture anymore. It helped us draw the region. Now here's the area, the area is 1 half times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of r squared. Or if you want integral from 0 to 2 pi, 1 half r squared d theta. Which now we can write in terms of theta, that's why it's d theta. And then it becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 half, 1 minus sine of theta squared d theta. And then this we can just evaluate, for instance, by expanding out. So what we get then, it's the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 half minus... 1 half times 2 times sine of theta, so minus sine of theta, plus 1 half sine squared of theta, d theta. That's very good, and then each piece, if you want, we can evaluate separately. So this is the antiderivative is theta from 0 to 2 pi, sorry, theta over 2 from 0 to 2 pi. This one, an antiderivative is cosine of theta from 0 to 2 pi. Because if you differentiate cosine, you get minus sine. And for this, we just need to work a little bit harder. So that's 1 half. Now, sine squared of theta, if you remember your double angle formulas, this becomes 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2 theta, d theta. And 
you'll see lots of one halves here. So now, again, going back to this, a two pi over two, that's pi minus zero, and then cosine of two pi minus cosine of zero, which just cancels out, one minus one, and then plus one half. Now, an antiderivative is theta over two, and minus, now, an antiderivative becomes one half sine of two theta, except if you differentiate this, you get cosine two theta times two. So to get rid of that two from the Chen Lu, you um, divide by two. That's from zero to two pi. Okay, pause if you want to write this down. Okay, and then what you're left with is pi. Very delicious, but it's not pi day yet, it's Valentine's Day. And then plus one half, again, two pi over two, minus zero over two, and then minus one quarter sine of four pi plus one quarter sine of zero. Now, sine of pi m, so sine of multiples of pi to zero. So this is zero, this is zero. And then what you end up with in the end, it's pi plus pi over two. And that's three pi over two. So the area under that heart, this heart here, it's at three pi over two. Nice. Maybe not factorial, but this is true. And we got that from that weird formula for the area. And now let me explain you where this comes from. I don't want to cover things too much, so here we go. All right, now. Here's the main idea. So why is the area of a curve, I mean, the area enclosed by a polar curve, why is it in general one half times the integral from a to b of r squared d theta? Now, and again, we have this weird polar curve, let's say, from r equals, from theta equals a to theta equals b. And in general, we have r, the radius, which is r of theta. So, again, this is an angle theta. We don't even need this right now. Okay, now what's the idea? The idea is, suppose you start at the point theta here, so angle theta radius r, and you're, um, you're changing theta a little bit. And let me exaggerate this a bit. Then, if you're changing theta a little bit, you're kind of adding d theta to whatever angle you have. And then what you get is this little region here. Now, the area of this weird region, like this one here, it's a bit hard to calculate. But what is easier to calculate is the area of this little wedge, this little circular wedge. And notice, it, this is almost the same as this wiggly curve. So by approximation, the area of this wedge is roughly the area of this little curve. But then, what is the area of this wedge? Well, look, the radius is r, so r of theta, and the little angle is d theta. So the area is just, if you want, the area of a sector with radius r and angle d theta. And the question is, what is that area? Well, let's use a little bit of proportionality. So. In general, if you have a circle or a wedge of length L and angle alpha to 
define the area again of this wedge, you just need to use some proportionality. So if we have an angle of 2 pi, then we would have a full circle of uh, length radius L, so the area would be pi L squared. But now if we have an angle of alpha, the area is whatever question mark is, and we can just solve for question mark. That becomes alpha pi L squared over 2 pi. And therefore, alpha over 2 L squared. So the angle over 2 times the radius squared. So in particular, applying it to this example, the area of this wedge area of that becomes, again, the angle, which is the alpha, over 2 times the radius squared, which is basically what we have here, 1 half r squared d theta. So in other words, as I said, the area of this wedge here becomes 1 half r squared d theta. And now the question is, why do we get an integral? Well, simply because thinking of this as a big cake, we're just adding up little wedges. So you're just adding up little wedges with d theta, and in general, if you just add up r those little arcs, well, you should get something that's similar to the area of the actual thing you're trying to calculate. But remember in math, uh, we don't add things, at least in calculus, we don't add things, instead we're just integrating these things. So what you have then in the end is that the area is just the sum of all those little wedges. So in other words, the integral from the little wedges from angle A up to angle B of area of little wedges, which is 1 half r squared d theta, which is exactly what we have here. 1 half integral from a to b, r squared d theta. And this is why we have that formula, and this is why the area of my heart is 3 pi over 2. All right, I hope you like this little Valentine's Day special. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.